Hi there guys this is your friend and tutor Manas and today we will be continuing with our discussion on cycloidal curves um the problem that i've picked up is slightly advanced form of a cycloid having different kinds of conditions and stipulations incorporated let's see what the problem has in store here we go a wheel of 50 mm diameter rolls towards the right on a horizontal flow for half revolution and then on a vertical wall in the upward direction for the remaining half revolution without slipping Draw the locus of the point P on the circumference of the wheel. Take the initial point of contact with the flow. Name the curve. Now we know very well whenever a circle uh, with a point on its circumference rolls along a straight line, and if we keep a track of that point on the circumference, and then it's obviously going to generate some kind of a curve which is known as a cycloid. But the issue is that this particular circle, which is having a diameter of 50 millimeters, is Uh, rolling in two different ways. Firstly, it is rolling along a horizontal line. You can say for half revolution, and the remaining half revolution, it is traveling in the upward direction or rolling in the upward direction. So all these things are to be incorporated in our drawing, and let's see how it goes. Circle diameter 50 millimeter, radius obviously 50 by 2 will give you 25. So let's start by drawing initially a circle of radii 25. All right. Now let's have eight equal parts of the circle. So this is the entire circle. So this is two parts. Two becomes four, and now four becomes eight. All right. Each and every sector over here, okay, has been divided into. Or you can also say that all these sectors have been bisected. So ninety degree becomes forty five degrees. Forty five, forty five, forty five, forty five, and same stuff has to be repeated in these two sectors also. All right. But let's move ahead, and you can clearly see that this. Line I have drawn. Okay, now circle is gonna roll for half a revolution. Now, had the circle rolled for one complete revolution, we would have said that it has traveled a distance of pi d, that is equivalent to its circumference. In this case, the circle is rolling along this horizontal line for only half revolution. That means that is clear indication rather that the circle is going to travel a distance of pi d upon two. That means it is going to be equivalent to half of its circumference, and that is exactly going to be the length of this line. Okay, pi d upon two, and it's going to work out as seventy-eight point five. You can put the value of d over here. D is equivalent to fifty, and you can get this value seventy-eight point five millimeters. All right. Now let's move ahead and let's see where does it roll. So it is going to roll in the clockwise sense. All right, and we are naming these points. Now this particular point has been. Regarded as one, there is a specific reason behind this. Now, when this circle will start to roll, this is going to be the point which is initially going to come into contact with this directing line. After this point, this point is going to come in contact. So we are going to be giving them respect sequentially. So since this comes into contact initially, so this has been named as one. This is going to be named as two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. All right. So this is last point is not going to be eight. It's going to be p, which we'll keep a track on. All right, now let's move ahead, and let's see what else can be done. Now, when this circle will roll for half a revolution, you can clearly see this point one will be over here, this point two will leave an impression here, this point three will leave an impression here, and this four will leave an impression over here. That means, or that clearly indicates that this line would automatically get divided into four equal parts, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now. So, from this particular point, I'm going to randomly draw a line. At any suitable angle, okay. And now let's say we place four points over here, since this line has to be divided into four equal parts in the form of arcs, okay. So let's have an arc of radii one centimeter. Let's put them, okay. Now with this as center, one more arc. This as center, one more arc. This as center, one more arc. So four arcs. Fourth arc has to be joined with the end of this line. All right. Let's join them. Let's keep our mini drafter over here. Tighten the screw. Move it to the third point. Draw a line. Make sure these lines are absolutely pa parallel. Move it to the second point. Draw a line. First point. Draw a line. That's it. Okay. These are the four points. You can also say that these are one dash, two dash, three dash, four dash. Okay. Fine. Moving ahead, we're gonna draw these so-called horizontal lines. Let me show you once again. Okay. Now these lines can be drawn pretty easily with the help of setting your mini drafters in a very horizontal way. Or let's say you're keeping your mini drafter along this directing line. Tighten the screw. Bring it upwards uh, to this point seven. Draw a line. Keep on drawing these lines. All right. And now you need to shift these points in the upper direction. Okay. So that can also be done with the help of a drafter. All right. Something like this. So this is the initial center C zero. This is gonna be C one, C two, C three, and C four. Now the center reaches C1, so with C1 as center and radii equivalent to 25. All right, we'll make an arc over here, passing through this line one. Okay, okay, something like this. So this is going to be your point 
P1. Similarly, with C2 is center, and through this line passing through 2, all right, we're gonna cut one more arc, something like this, okay, something like this. Let me show you again. This is gonna be a point P2, all right. Now with C3 is center, we're gonna put one more arc, all right, this way, on a line passing through 3. So this is gonna be point P3. Now with C4 is center, we're gonna put one more arc on a line passing through 4, all right, something like this, and this is going to be your point P4. So guys, half revolution of the circle is over, okay? So now point 4 will be down here, something like this, okay? So that's the half revolution of the circle. Moving ahead, there is a wall somewhere here, okay? Let me show you where the wall is, okay, all right? Something like this. And all these points have been transferred upwards. You can clearly see this is 7 and 1. So this is going to be one intersection point. This is another intersection point. So this is intersection point, intersection point. Go upstairs, upstairs, upstairs. All these points have been shifted in the upward direction. All right, the next thing to do is to create these so-called centers. So this is C0, C1, C2, C3, C4. The next step is extremely important. Pay attention, guys. Keep one leg of your compass at C3, other leg at C4. Now with that much as the radii, with C4 as the center, okay? With C4 as the center, cut an arc, something like this. This is going to be C5. Now with C5 as center, cut an arc. This is going to be C6. C6 as center, cut an arc. C7, C7 is center, cut an arc, C8. Now let us give this circle a rotation, okay, something like this. In the clockwise sense, it's gonna go in the upper direction. So when the center position is at C5, and uh, let's see where the line from 5 is. So this is the line from 5. With C5 as the center, we're gonna cut an arc over here. That's gonna give us point P5, all right. Now let's see where, the, now with C6 as center, where, let us see where the line from 6 is. Okay, this is the line from 6. This is the line from 6. C6 as center. We're going to put one more arc. So you can clearly see that this line is not intersected. Rather, this arc that we put is actually grazing or it's actually touching this line. Okay, so this is going to be your point P6. Finally, we have point uh, P7 and P8. And let's see how they can be worked out. So C7, C7. So where is the line through 7? So this is the line through 7, horizontal. And this is the vertical through 7. And with C7 as the center, somewhere here, we need to put an arc. All right, something like this. And this over here represents point P7. Finally, we have center C8. So where is 8? So there is no such point as 8. 7, this can be regarded as 8 if you go here and go upstairs. So this is the line for 8. So with C8 as center, you need to cut an arc in, along this center line only okay so this is going to give you point p8 all right guys now we have all the points we have kept a track of this point p when the circle rolled in the horizontal direction for half revolution and then rolled in the vertical direction for remaining half revolution and on shining all these points you're going to get this for the first half revolution this is the cycloid and the remaining half revolution this is the cycloid that's it so that was all from my side guys if you have any doubts or queries do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics then do recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of you can learn engineering graphics in the best possible way so guys i'll see you again with a new problem slightly based on hypercyclide it's it's a slightly advanced problem until then it's a wrap for today so this is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.